Hello friends and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about some of the smaller construction details of the Voice of Lancelot and answer um, some questions or comments from Luis Rivera um, that he made on my last video and he asked about the, 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 the hole at the, in the top, how I done that, um, whether I should use some foam maybe to, 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 to reduce re the distortion or some ringing that I mentioned and um, yeah, what I've done there and did I round it out. So, um, and then I'll go into some other things like the, the panel construction um, and, and other techniques that I use to put this together. Um, so this is all the stuff that I didn't mention in any of the earlier videos. Um, so I'll just go over those, um, those, those elements and some of the materials that I used. So first of all, compression driver. So this, the compression driver hangs in the top. It's mounted with these four bolts. Um, so I use a little ring and the, the bolts um, that, that's get mounted there. I used a hole saw. Um, unfortunately, when I um, then uh, used the router to, all, to, to give a nice smooth edge, I actually took out too much wood. So what I've done afterwards, um, and this is rounded off, um, but it, it, um, it was too far, so I had a flat surface. So what I've done now is add some blue tech to, uh, to really round out, to, to make a transition from, from the, the exit of the, the compression driver and, and, and try to smooth it out. Now, this is by no means um, perfect, but... Um, yeah, I, I didn't hear too many differences, uh, um, but um, I've, I've, yes, uh, nonetheless, I've tried to smooth it out and also here prevent on these uh, nuts. You know, you know, it's nicer maybe if these are sunken in somehow and you have a bit thicker top. Um, but at the moment, they're sitting on top, so I've used some blue tech to, to uh, prevent any deflections from that. Now, um, so that is the compression driver. Now, I think what um, Lewis was referring to with his 8, 9 kilohertz thing that I mentioned is I, I noticed some ringing and it's, and it's, it's not that much. Uh, it is at, um, you know, after 270 milliseconds. So a lot of people, when they show the waterfall graph, they only show the first 30 dBs and it doesn't show up there. It shows up when you do like the first minus 40 dB. So I've got some ringing there at 8 to 9 kilohertz and I don't know what it is, but 8 to 9 kilohertz actually translates into something like you know, nine half, ten millimeters um, that, that must cause a, a, a certain ringing. And so I, I can't see that happening here because this is, the exit is 49 millimeters. And I don't know what the entry there is, but it's um, it's probably still one and a half inch or something. So it's um, 37 millimeters. So I'm not exactly sure where, that, where, where that's um, coming from. Um, so as, as with this rounding out here, where I used the router, so I actually use this on all the edges. So all the edges have um, this the same round profile. Um, it's not perfect. And this is one of the disadvantages of using a 12 meter, a millimeter tw plywood. It's just that you don't have that much material to work with to smooth this out. Um, and again here, um, I'll get back to this to top because uh, th there's a bit more to talk about here, but I'll, I'll just finish this off with, uh, with the woofer. So this was done with a jigsaw. Um, just draw a, a circle, uh, use your jigsaw, take your time, um, and then make it as smooth as possible. And then I used the router again um, to, um, to just round it out. So as you can see perhaps here, I hope you can see it. Yeah, it's just smooth it out all the way through and it fits very neat, neatly with the inside of this uh, insulation. There's often a like cork or another type of material that, um, that is used in between the frame of the, 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 frame of the speaker and, and, and um, the plywood or your, your outside material. Um, and that needs to be airtight. You can't have any gaps, especially where, the, where, where you have the mounting, uh, the screws or the, the bolts um, uh, going into the wood. You really need to make sure you have no air gaps. Now again, air caps. No, no, I'll talk about that later um, with with the removable panel on the speaker. Um, now, yeah, I'll, I'll go into that now. Um, so, sorry about it. So, in this speaker, as you may have seen in, in earlier videos, um, here the front panel comes off, and reason is 
I can really easily access this. I can access the wiring very well. So here we have uh, a four pole um, Speakon connector that I use. And so I've got short wire connections to the woofer and the compression driver. And, um, you know, that's easily to ma maintain also because we've got the divider here. Um, if I would have opened the back, it is just harder to deal with the wo woofer. So I chose this. And there was another reason um, why I have a fixed panel now at the back because I identified that with this design and having a divider, which is of course connected to the side panels, is that you get less active and less resonances here to the side. Uh, A, because of agitation, because of course the woofer, most of the energy goes to the back and is in this panel um, because it's, 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 it's using that as its, um, as its launching path, if you, path, if you will. Um, um, but of course, it is uh, the woofer construction is quite close to the sides and the frame that is in here, so it, it is quite solidly mounted, uh, despite of course creating a big hole in the in the structure of the wood. But the back panel is the one that is most active, so it only has the connections on the side, and um, and so having it fixed to the frame means that its resonances are the be are controlled the best, and um, having it non-removable means. Um, I don't have to deal with air gaps or, 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 or construction items that have maybe impede with that active panel. Um, so I made the front removable and I, I, I took, take, have taken great care in making sure that all these cuts are extremely straight. So I, I couldn't recommend using a jigsaw to, to do these panels. I'd really recommend any method that can... Um, um, use uh, make straight cuts so we're talking a table saw a table saw with guy and guides or uh, anything with it has a guide or, or maybe um you know a cnc table or something that can cut it out for you so that everything that has to do with sealing the front um, or sealing the panel that comes off is completely flat now one additional thing it's, it's never perfect um but one additional thing that I've done to make sure that it, is, uh, it has a solid seal is I've used this in between the, the, the gap. So if, as you can see here, you, you might see it here, there's a small black line. And what I've done is I put one millimeter self-adhesive um, foam. So it has uh, an, an adhesive on one side. So I just st stuck that to the, f the frame and the, the plywood. And this is a very dense foam. Hope it zooms in. There we go. So it's very thin, self-adhesive, dense, and um, that 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 made sure that the sides are very nicely sealed. So there's a little bit of gif and flex in this, but it is very little. It is, you can't you can compress it, but it's not that much. Um, so that has worked. If you're concerned about the lifespan of such a thing. Um, I would recommend going for an automotive type foam because automotive um, rubbers and foams, they're, they're usually made for, um, I would go for something that doesn't have much flex. Uh, you really want a solid construct, solid connection with, um, with the frame. Um, but automotive foam is just made to be in harsh sunshine and in freezing weather. And it's all those conditions that you won't have inside your home. So um, that's, that stuff should, should last you a lifetime or, uh, or at least close to it um, in, 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 you know, in a domestic environment. So um, yeah, that's the solution I used. Now just for the screws, I use this. Um, so the panels are being fixed with uh, something like this, although it's a brass one, not this uh, galvanized type, but with a large head, flat head, so that uh, distributes the, the, the pressure. Um, um, this distributes the pressure quite nicely um, on the plywood so you don't uh, create huge holes. So I previously used these, which are a bit smaller, um, but they'll eventually just sink into the wood um, as you open and close it. So that's that. Uh, oh, um, I haven't shown this. So this is what I used between the frame and the um, the, the frame and and the plywood just to make it air, air, seal the air, make sure that there's no leaks in there. Um, I used very little, very sparingly. Um, 
it's just all only about sealant and this stuff stays flexible for quite a large again it's made for in to be in harsh conditions outdoor conditions um, and it stays quite reasonably flexible um, i don't use much but you know I, i'd rather not have for be chasing air leaks afterwards so that's why i use that um, and and the rest is of course all screw screwed so that that, that it's um, it is not used um, structurally but it's just as a sealant um, there's one warning with this um, this has uh, will um, gas when you use it like it will um, it will, will release some um, um, solvents that will gas out so before you put your drivers in just let it gas out just let it sit um, before you mount your woofers uh, because it might negatively affect it depending on what solvents they used in it so just be a bit bit solvents aware let it gas out outside your home not inside your home um, and then uh, and then, then mount your movers especially these which are you know they're rare, rare drivers so you don't you just don't want to screw them up um, Yes, now one thing, uh, final mention, um, and that is the top panel. So for anyone uh, considering a project like that and doing something simple, what I've discovered that it makes quite a difference is in having the compression driver be as stable as possible and not have any of the resonances that the woofer produces. So combined with uh, what I said of the rounding of the edge, what I would do a next time is actually use a sandwich construction of materials on top and make this much thicker so it becomes a very stable non-resonant base on the top and um, if you have seen there's a video on the world's second best uh, speaker um, which is a void pipe um, and, and, and it has millions of views and those guys actually experimented with uh, some bitumous material um, use some plywood bitumous material and some other plywood so i would probably layer it with different types of wood and do something in between so you have a sandwich construction and use that as the top at least something sandwich with different materials so it doesn't have a single resonance um, thing make this much thicker than the top so this top panel, so that this gets a nice thing, but also by going, for example, to 24 or 30 millimeters, you might um, be able to use a much smoother rounding here. Um, and, and so I think you will solve two things. You will solve edge diffractions much nicer, and you'll have a very nice stable mounting for your compression driver. So yeah, really, that's my last piece of advice there, and that's that's probably what um, if I, um, what I'm going to do in the next one is is really addre address the the mounting and the stability of of uh, of the 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 compression driver. I'm not sure exactly how just yet, but um, um, I think that that combined will uh, I think it will give two benefits. So that's it for this video. I hope Lewis that that answered your questions. Um, and that for anyone else that it sort of maybe fills in some of the blanks and um, yeah i'll hope to catch you in the ne next video thank you for listening and um, have a great day and um, see you the next time bye bye